Hey guys, welcome back to the Woolen Homestead. This is a video podcast all about my knitting, spinning, some crocheting sometimes, all sorts of crafty stuff. My name's Tiffany. You can find me as the Woolen Homestead on Instagram. Um, we've got an email, uh, thewoolenhomestead at gmail.com. This is podcast episode 97, and it is May 27th, 2021. So coming to you from Michigan, um, it's partly cloudy out. It's 45 degrees out, uh, which is not, I feel like not the norm for May. Um, so it's a little odd, but I figured I'd take advantage of it, wear some hand knits today because it's probably the last one that I'm going to be able to wear <laughs> for a little while. So what I'm wearing is the Marled Magic Sweater by Stephen West. So it's super long and flowy and I love this sweater. It's a very poncho-esque, I would say. I love it so much. Uh, it was one of my favorite knits. I knitted it a couple of years ago and I would absolutely 100% knit another one of these. It's a big project, but so worth it. So much fun. Let's see, what else do we have? Um, oh, there is a P.O. box for the podcast. Um, information for that is in the down bar if you wanna donate anything for a giveaway. I will also have show notes in the down bar. And yeah, we got a little bit to talk about today. I haven't been on for a couple of weeks again. So I'm happy to get in a podcast for the uh, month of May. And I've got some, I have an FO, I have a half finished object um, and a work in progress, some acquisitions and some life stuff. So yeah. All right. Um, so for finished objects, I don't actually have them with me. So I do have a picture, um, but they are the heart and soul socks um, that I knit. Well, I called them the heart and soul socks. It's actually um, soul to soul was the yarn. And it's from Sirdar. The color number, let's see. I think it's 0050. I think that's what the color number was. Um, otherwise, I'll have it in the show notes because I know I had it on from before. Um, but those socks were actually a present for my mom. So let's see. I think those were her... It's either Mother's Day or birthday. I can't remember which was which now. That was her birthday present. Yes, that was her birthday present. And um, yeah, because her birthday was on the 25th on Tuesday. So yeah, that was really fun. I got to give her those the other day when she came to visit. Um, so they were those little shorty socks that I was knitting. They were 64 stitches, um, size US 1, Chiaogu 9 inch circulars. I did a heel flap and gusset with a little rolled cuff on the top as well. And my mom said they fit her perfect. She said they never came down and like came off of her foot while they were in her shoe. Um, she wore them around while she was visiting here and she said they just worked out really well. So I was really happy to hear that. Um, it was really fun knitting shorty socks too. I kind of want to knit myself a pair. Um, I only have one pair and they're a little big. Um, they were a pair of hand spun. They just turned out just a touch too big. So I might, I might knit myself a pair of shorties this summer. Um, let's see. Oh, my half finished object is in this bag here. I do have a needle poking out. <laughs> But I've got this really cute little kind of woodland bag. This is from Chasing Acorns, who is a Michigander. And let's see here. I really love her bags. I just got these nice little handle, little carabiner. And... Oh, I didn't grab a blocker, but... You guys can still see it. So it's my hand spun socks. You guys haven't even seen this cast on yet, but if you're on Instagram, you might have seen it. Um, so May 1st, I cast on these hand spun socks. Um, the fiber was from Wound Up Fiber Arts. It was a scrappy sock bundle, and which she is out of Michigan too. And um, this was so much fun. I spun this this year or at the end of last year. I know I finished it this year, but I don't remember when I started it, but um, it was addictive to spin and it was addictive to knit. So, oh, I love it. It turned out to be about a DK-ish weight. Um, and I did want to let you guys know 
what the stitch count I used because I changed it from my Instagram post and I haven't updated that yet. So um, the yarn was about 264 yards. Um, I used size US 3 needles and I ended up doing 48 stitches. I originally tried 56 before and it was just turning out a bit big. So I ripped it back and restarted and um, was really happy with 48 stitches. It fits perfect so I'm super happy with it. I used a couple of patterns to kind of figure out which stitch count was going to work for me. So I did use um, the Sock Knitter's Handbook as far as once I did finish or figure out my stitch count, um, how to knit the heel because I like the heel flap and gusset, but I never know the math for like how to do the heel turn. So I, once I figured out my stitch count, I used that book for the heel flap and gusset pattern. And then my stitch count, um, I just kind of looked at a bunch of different DK sock patterns and one that I ended up landing on was from Biscott Yarns. It was on their website and it was free but you had to just put it in your cart and check out but it was free and it was emailed to you and it was called DK Pure Socks and they had I think like a kids, women's, and men's sock and the women's was 48 stitches and so that's why I ended up trying that after the 56 didn't work. So yeah, they fit wonderful. I'm super happy with it. And I was starting to get a little worried that I was going to run out of yarn because I'd never knit DK weight socks. So, you know, with sock yarn, you just know, oh, a whole skein's going to get me no problem. And then as I was knitting this, I was like, oh my gosh, am I going to have enough? And I've got this much left, which is I weighed it and it's actually 70 grams. And so I didn't even use half the skin because I think I had about a hundred, maybe just a little over a hundred as far as weight. Um, so really happy with that. I did a little bit shorter of a cuff. I think I did five and a, or of the leg. I did five and a half inches, including the cuff before I started the heel. So that worked out really well. I love these so much, so much. I can't wait to see how they wear. It's only a two ply that I've got, but We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I tried to go for a dense fabric. And let's see, I've got my sock ruler in here. I love this thing. I use that for the foot all the time when I knit socks. So yes, very happy with those hand spun socks. I, I'm hoping to cast on the second one today. I just finished them last night or the, that first sock last night. Um, so I'm hoping to cast on today and see how close I can get to finishing them before Tuesday, which is June 1st. <sighs> it just depends because my other project that I've got to show you guys has been taking up a lot of my time and I am obsessed with it right now. So if you've been watching, you probably know what this is. I have gotten to the yoke on my Fjord Folk Genser. So, <laughs> I'm so excited about this. So, last time I showed you guys, I was on the sleeve here. That's my stitch marker. And so, sleeve is all done. Everything's joined. It was quite a process to get this joined for me. I took like a whole like evening just to make sure I had the right stitch count. I had everything placed evenly um, because in the pattern you need to center the um you need to center the chart on your sweater and so i had to i'd done it before because i've knit another one of her patterns which this is by lincoln newman and um so i had done it before but i just like had to really double check that i was doing it right but i i am so happy with this i'm gonna try and spread this out so you can see a little better so it's paw prints so you can really tell that they're coming in. Oh, you guys. I'm so happy. I was trudging through those sleeves. I was so over it, which I usually don't have a sleeve island issue at all. I hated those sleeves. I was so, especially the second one. I was just over it. But it's so worth it. I'm so glad I didn't do plain stockinette. Or, I'm sorry, plain, you know, no, um, the, I think they call it flea, flea and tick. Um, flea and tick. <laughs> I'm a dog groomer, so I always have flea and tick 
prevention on my mind. Um, but <laughs> the, what do they call it? Flea? I think they just called the flea pattern or something like that. But, um, it's just where you have the little V's on there, <laughs> which I remember a couple months ago, my mother and I were, or my mother-in-law and I were laughing about, um, the fact that that's called like fleas or ticks or whatever it's called. Um, but that, that this has got paw prints on it and it's got fleas. So we were laughing about that. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so I am ecstatic with this and I can't stop working on it. I'm obsessed. It's all I want to work on. Um, so between that and my hand spun socks, I am like loving my projects that I've got. So I really like the detail below too. I just think that like right below the paw prints. I just think that's so pretty. So very, very happy. I've got a little bit of a color change that I think is seen. It's actually, it actually doesn't show up super like obvious on camera. So I'm very happy with that. But from the body, when I joined the yoke, um, I was doing, oh my gosh, why can't I think of it? Helical, helical knitting. I was doing that through the body and the arms, which was kind of a pain with doing the color work. If it was just plain stock and that, it would have been fine, but it was a kind of awkward, but it was fine. Just weird. Um, and a little fiddly and fumbly for me, but I decided I wasn't going to do that for the orange here in the yoke. So it's a little more, I think it's a little more obvious, but honestly on camera, I feel like it's not that bad. So maybe it's not that bad in real life either. I am still alternating rows, um, because I'm using, if you've seen this before too, you know, I'm using like 12 different size yarns in this. So I wanted to make sure that it was a little bit more seamless. Um, so I have gone on to using the worsted weight pumpkin spice colorway in here. And so the dye took this weight a little bit differently than our DK did. And so it's not bad, but you can just see a little bit of difference. So that's why I really wanted to make sure that I was, um, alternating. And I think, I think this is going to work. I think it's not going to be too obvious. I was worried it was gonna be way more obvious. Um, but I think I've got enough yarn that I can alternate for the rest of the sweater. So very excited about that. Um, also knitting with a bunch of different weights isn't as weird as I thought it would be. I've got fisherman's wool. This is from, uh, <laughs> this is from a sweater that I had pulled out. Um, I had started knitting a sweater for Ethan that was all over cables. It was just a bit too much for my brain and it, the size wasn't turning out. And so I just ripped it out. But, um, this is the yarn from that. So it's still fisherman's wool. I just got onto a new, um, hank of it. And then I'm using Lion Brand Sport Weight, just this tan color, which this is not a line that they have anymore. And then I already showed you guys the pumpkin spice colorway, which is yarn that we used to dye. Um, and, ooh, I just saw a snag. Ooh, it's caught on my, um, look at that. It's caught on my, um, charm there. Okay. Crisis averted. I am going to probably just tuck that in though. There. I just tucked that back in. <laughs> oh, Okay. Yeah, so I'm thrilled with this. It's turning out way better than I like could even imagine. I love it so much. I am debating on doing the turtleneck. I love how it looks. I don't know. I can't decide. So I have one turtleneck sweater, and I like it. I just feel like I don't know if it's very flattering on me, but I, I don't know or if I want like all that up there, like I would kind of just rather put on a cowl if I was cold, but I also feel like it would just be so cozy and, and nice. So I'll show you guys the picture because I do want to talk more about the pattern and how I navigated it. So it's from this book by Lincoln Newman. This is Vilmark Skensura. And this book is in Norwegian, the English version is supposed to be coming out, I think in September, it says on her website. Um, this is her first book. She does have another book, but that's also in Norwegian as well. And 
There is the picture. So pretty. And I know I mentioned this before, but in case you're new, how I navigated this with it being in Norwegian, I, I just used Google Translate. And then I just wrote it down. So I would translate it. I translated the pattern first and wrote it down in a notebook. So I have the English version for me um, written down there. And then the charts, obviously, I just use the charts. Um, and then what I did have, I have a um, another pattern of hers, just a single pattern that I had bought previous when I knit um, the Vilmark's Gunsrun sweater. And that one, that's a bulky one, and I love that sweater too. I actually want to knit another one because the one that I have doesn't fit great anymore. So I kind of would like to get another one. Um, and I had that one in English. So, cause you can buy her pattern single, like singly. And so I just kind of cross referenced anything. If I was, wasn't quite sure how it translated, I could kind of cross reference. So yeah, it was super, super helpful to do that. So that was fun. Um, let's see. Yeah. I talked about the yarns that I used for that. So I am so happy with that. It's so funny because that pattern or that sweater was so just kind of a slog for me before when I went on the sleeves, even though I knew I wanted the finished project or product, but, um, I'm over the moon with it now. So very, very happy and which I figured I would be, but I'm even more happy, happy with it than I thought I would be. Um, the bag that it is living in, well, it's <laughs> the yarn is mostly living in it now. It's really grown out of this bag, but this is a bags by awesome granny bag. I still love this. I moved my little hank of yarn over here, but now I, Need to fix it again. I keep messing with it. It's so cute, little keychain. That was from Amy from Noble Character Crafts. And let's get a sip of tea. I've got my dog mom mug. I've got some peppermint tea this morning. It's so nice. I still can't believe how chilly it was last night. It's so. This does not feel like the norm for Michigan this time of year at all. Um, it's just so funny, but we just go with it here. <laughs> it's just what we expect. Um, so that is it for the projects that I'm working on. I've been weirdly monogamous with my knitting lately. It's so interesting. Um, I still have a ton of projects cast on, but I'm just trying to focus on a couple, um, just to get some kind of headway on them. But, um, I was thinking going forward, what I would like to do is have like a bigger project, like a sweater, shawl, anything like that and then have a couple little ones like socks and things like that. So I think that's gonna work out well for me. Um, so that's it for my projects. I wanted to talk about um, kind of some knit along type things that I'm gonna be participating in. So I am gonna participate in um, Crazy Sock Ladies Summer Sock Camp. So that starts on June 1st and um, she is hosting it on Ravelry, but she's also going to have, um, you can just participate in Instagram, um, using the hashtag summer sock camp 2021. So that's how I'm going to be participating in it. And I'm really excited about that. Um, and then I'm also going to be when oh, I did buy one of her pins. So I'm looking forward to that. I, she had said it's not going to ship for a while, which I am totally fine with. I figure, um, I'm just going to think about it as like a little souvenir. Um, that I'll have, you know, even if it's sock camps over with. So I'm excited about having that. Um, I'm also going to participate in Stash Dash, which is by the Knit Girls. They have a YouTube podcast and um, they are hosting that on Discord. So I'm looking forward to that too. That's just where you work on um, to get any of your projects done and you count the meterage. So it's, it's really neat. I've done it a couple summers ago and you can use spinning. Um, you know, you can use, if you're finishing up blankets, things like that, that gets you a lot of yardage, but that's just really fun. Just a nice way to help get your projects finished up. And both of these, I believe are going through most of summer. So it'd be nice long-term ones. I might do some, um, tour de fleece. I haven't done that in a little while either. Um, for spinning. So that'll be kind of fun. So acquisitions. I bought a couple of things. So it is birthday month for me. 
My birthday is May 29th, so that's this Saturday. So I'm excited about that. And I am gonna take this out of its bag really quick. Okay, so I made a purchase from Mountain State Stitches on Etsy. And I got this gorgeous, gorgeous project bag. I have been wanting to get one of Jenny's bags for a couple of months now. And it, usually I would be like at work or something. I would just miss the, um, the update. So I was really excited when I was able to snag this on one of my breaks at work. So, oh, it's just so pretty. It's got little polka dot fabric. It's just really well made, nice quality. It feels nice and squishy. And I love the little handle here. It's drawstring. I love this fabric. So super excited about that. I think I'm gonna use this um, during sock camp. So I'll be casting on all of the socks. Can't wait. And, um, yeah, so that was Mountain State Stitches. I'll have a link in the show notes for her Etsy shop. The other things that I bought were two braids of fiber from Wound Up Fiber Arts. You can see the colors a little better if I turn it around. So she is the one that I bought my um, hand spun socks, the fiber that I spun from that. I love her fiber. I This is, I think, my, I think these are my third and fourth um, braids from her. I really like her stuff a lot. It's been so nice. I love her colors. I just think she does a wonderful job. So these are both one-of-a-kind colors. Um, let me see which one is which. Not that it matters because it's one-of-a-kind, but just in case you're curious, um, even though the numbers will probably not coincide with her next update that she does. But in case there's more in her shop right now, you can check it out. So this was one of a kind number eight. And this was one of a kind 15. So yes, can't wait. So I believe those were, um, I think they're sock, super sock is what she calls them. Yeah, super sock. So it's 95% super wash merino, 10% nylon. See some more hand spun socks in my future. And that is it for acquisitions. I do have more on the way. <laughs> I have been having fun using birthday month as an excuse. Um, so I'll have more to show in the coming weeks. Uh, but for life stuff, I, after I spoke with you guys last, which was about a, actually almost a month ago. Wow, I didn't realize it was that long because it was April 29th. Crazy, yeah. So I got my second COVID shot. Um, I had a little bit of a reaction. I had a fever. It was pretty low grade. It was 100.4. Um, but I definitely felt crummy. That's for sure. Like I didn't really want to knit. I just kind of laid around. Um, I had just very achy, just tired exhaustion. And I had that for a couple of days, even though like the fever went away by the next day. I didn't stick around for very long, thank goodness. But, um, like, when I went back to work, like, I got tired very quickly. So that just stuck around for a couple of days. But other than that, everything went great. Um, on the 3rd, Ethan and I had our 8-year at wedding anniversary. So that was exciting. And he surprised me with a MacBook. So that was super exciting. I was not expecting that at all. I had talked about wanting one. I, you know, even considered, um, like, maybe for my birthday or sometime this summer getting one. I love it. It's so fun. It's so nice. I just keep it right on our um, kitchen table and so I can sit in the morning and kind of go on there for a little bit and it's just been really nice to have. So um, let's see here. Yes, work. Lots of work. Always keeping me busy, <laughs> but still going good. And then um, Oh, I got my hair done. I, you can't, probably can't really tell now, but I got it, um, more highlights. I do like the balayage um, technique or whatever is what it's called. It's some, where they like paint it in. And um, so I just keep getting like highlights on top of highlights and it just makes it kind of a little bit of blonde. So it's kind of fun. But then it still has the brunette in there too. Um, I also got new glasses. These are new glasses. I got two sets. Um, but this is one of them. I really like these. They're like a, like a mauve tortoise shell. I'm really happy with them. Um, Ella was at the vet again. So same stuff that was going on before. 
just she's been going back about every two weeks just for checkups so we're tapering her off of her prednisone and um because that's how they treat the um let's see mmm is what it's called masticatory muscle myositis <laughs> that's the word <laughs> and um so we believe that is what she has um she got an ultrasound i just realized i don't think i talked about that before too um or she had just had it maybe yeah she might have just had it then um but she had an ultrasound the results came back from that really good just to check out her spleen um because there was a little bit of concern on her x-ray about that but everything's fine with that she has a naked belly still which is so cute oh my gosh and it goes like way up her side <laughs> it's really funny um and then um but she's been doing well um let's see here yeah so they we did do a test to see if it was the mmm it came back negative, but what my vet said, and I'd read this online as well, that if it's in an acute stage, that will happen a lot. Like, it's very common that it'll come back negative. So they can still have it, but it's just in an acute stage. So she could have been showing some tips before that we didn't notice, things like that. Um, and so my vet believes that with everything, all the symptoms that she was showing, how she responded to the prednisone treatment, um, that it was almost... 100% that that is what she has. Um, so now we have two dogs with autoimmune diseases, but the good news is for her, it doesn't require constant medication. Um, if things maybe come back, we may have to go back on prednisone for a little bit here and there. Um, but right now she's being tapered off of it. She's down to half a pill once a day. So that's quite a staggering difference from two full pills twice a day. Um, so that's very exciting to see she was when she was on the full dosage she was you know having to go outside to go potty all the time it gets them very thirsty so they have to go potty a lot and um so it's i feel better for her that she doesn't have to worry about that anymore um and yes yeah, so we went back again um yesterday for another checkup on her blood work blood works looking great she's gained a little bit of weight which is good because she had lost some and um She's just got a bit of an upset tummy quite a bit. She's had for about the, almost a week or so, maybe almost two weeks. So we've got a um, probiotic for her to help with that. And um, yeah, overall she's doing pretty good. So the only things we'll probably potentially see going forward, and I know every dog's different, but with that disease, um, they lose a lot of muscle mass in their skulls. So because that disease attacks the muscles, uh, like the chewing muscles so it mm, potentially is going to look like she's got like little sunken spots on the top of her head but um they're not too bad right now as far as i can tell um but yeah overall miss ella's doing wonderful benny's doing good he's the one that has addison's and he takes his medicine every day he's on three and a half pills twice a day <laughs> so both dogs have little pill minders to make sure nobody misses anything but the dogs are doing great. Benny is up here with me on the futon. He, this is his room as far as he's concerned. He loves coming up here and hanging out. Every once in a while, if I have the door opened up here, usually we have it closed off, but if I have it open for whatever reason, maybe I brought something up here and then didn't close it, I'll be walking around the house. I'll be like, where's Benny? <laughs> he's up here hanging out by himself. Um, yeah, so also, oh, my mom came to visit last week, so that was a lot of fun. Um, so we celebrated, um, she brought a gift for Ethan and I for our anniversary. We celebrated her birthday, uh, Mother's Day, my birthday. So that was, it was a lot of fun. We went, um, we went to the Antique Center in Bay City. There's a huge Antique Center there. It's absolutely huge. It was so fun. It was almost a bit overwhelming because it was so big. Um, that was a lot of fun going there. And there was another one just down the street there. So we went there as well. And I got a really cool antique rocker. It's really nicely made. It's all wood. Um, I believe it's called a mission style. I believe that's what it was called mission. And it's been painted and reupholstered, but it's so nice. I love that it's painted. It's painted black. The upholstery is like a dark leather. 
and it's so comfy and so I just love how solid it is too. Um, so I'm loving that rocker. Uh, Ethan and I went for a motorcycle ride yesterday. I don't actually ride the motorcycle. I just sit on the back, <laughs> but, um, he, we went for a ride yesterday and it was actually really nice. So in the past I've talked about how I would get just a little bit scared <laughs> and I would just be kind of like nerved up the whole time, you know? Um, but I actually really enjoyed it yesterday, which was exciting. I was really happy to see that. Because I was worried that I was just going to be this nervous wreck forever. Um, but it was really enjoyable. It was a beautiful day. We just went across town. Um, but we actually, I think he said we got up to about 45 and maybe even 50 at one point. And the last time we did that, I was like freaking out. <laughs> so like at least on the inside, not outwardly or anything like that, but just like, oh my gosh. And we did that and I was completely fine. And we think what made a difference was we were able to talk to each other. Um, I had my AirPods in and he has like a, a comm system in his helmet. So we're actually thinking we're going to get one for mine as well. Um, but we tried that just to see if that would make a difference. And being able to talk to him while we were riding was, I think, really helpful for me. So that was really cool. Really happy about that. So that was really enjoyable. It was a beautiful day. He, um, after we got back, he he gave both of his motorcycles a bath and um <laughs> so cute so it was really fun he got a um power washer and blow he blow dries it with the um leaf blower and so there's no watermarks on it it's just awesome i sat out and i knit it was gorgeous out um yeah so my birthday is this saturday i'm super excited about that it'll be nice and just Looking forward to taking it easy, not really doing anything, hanging out and just knitting and, you know, being with family and just taking it easy. So that'll be a lot of fun. We're going to go over to um, Ethan's parents. They live right around the corner. So we're going to go over there and hopefully have a bonfire. Be nice to do that. And uh, yeah, I can't wait. I've got a vacation coming up here. So just gonna be good some R&R &R. gonna go visit my mom and yeah I think it's gonna be a great kickoff to summer usually I don't take much time off in the middle of summer so it's kind of nice to take it off at the beginning um a lot of my coworkers tend to take off stuff in the summer I'm more a, I like taking time off in the fall so <laughs> I'm gonna take some time off here and then look forward to you know, working through the summer and then having some time off in the fall too. So yeah, I hope you guys are doing good. Um, I don't think I've got anything else to really talk about. I think I'm going to figure out what socks I want to knit for summer sock camp. I'm really debating on casting on with reckless abandon <laughs> and just a ton of them grabbing all my needles that I can find and casting on or casting on a pair, you know, and seeing how that goes. So, and I can't decide if I want to do a pattern sock or not, because I'm much slower with the pattern socks versus just a straight stockinette sock. Um, cause once I'm done with my hand spun socks, I'll need another purse sock knitting project. So maybe I'll do one of each. I've got lots of options this way. So yeah, I think that's all I've got to talk about, guys. I feel like I have rattled on for quite a while now. Um, hope you guys are doing well. And yeah, I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.